Hey there, what's going on? What's up? I'm Andy. I'm a self-taught programmer, and in this video, I'm going to bust the most pernicious myth about becoming a software developer. There's a terrible, terrible, stupid, dumb myth out there about what it, you have. There's like one thing that you have to have to become a software developer, and I wanted to take some time off today and really cover that because a lot of you guys out there who are struggling believe that there's just like this magic thing that you have to have that you maybe don't. And I'm gonna cover that. Now, if you're new here and you have no idea who I am, I'm Andy Sterkwitz, and I'm a self-taught programmer, but I'm also a coach and mentor to people who are looking to get into the field. So I actually help people hone their skills, I help people get a real strategy for landing a job. So if you're interested in content similar to that, I highly recommend hitting the subscribe button below, but also hit the bell icon to get notifications anytime I put out a new video. So with all that being said, what is the most pernicious myth that I was talking about? And the myth basically goes like this, and I've seen it happen over and over again on forums, in my comment section here, in my Facebook group, and people will say, if they'll be struggling with something, they ask a question and somebody goes, look, if you can't sit down and do, figure this out or you can't sit down and do the work, then you're just not passionate enough. You have to have passion to be good at this. Only people who are passionate should be learning software development because everyone else can just get out. And it's like, it's such a dumbed down explanation for things. It's such a brown nose way to like, ha, I'm, I'm passionate about this, are you not passionate? And it really fucks with people. Like there's a lot of people out there who believe that they're not cut out for this because they don't feel like they can just sit down and, and learn to code for four or five hours a day or 30 hours a week or however long it takes. When that's just not the truth. I wasn't passionate about software development when I first started learning it. Back five years ago, my friend recommended that I learn JavaScript and I become a developer. He said, oh, I think you could be a good developer. And I got the head first JavaScript book. I started learning it and I, I started to really dive into it. I was like, this is interesting. This is very fun. I enjoyed learning at the time. Learning was a passion, but software development wasn't. I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. So I wasn't passionate. What I was passionate for and why I poured my heart and soul into becoming a programmer, and I really did, like that. I spent a year of my life sacrificing time away from friends and family, putting in a ton of time, studying, pushing myself past my comfort levels, really developing discipline, is because I saw that programming or becoming a programmer was a vehicle for accomplishing bigger goals that I had in life. Right, so learning is a passion. That was one passion that I had that I knew could be improved or I could accomplish another goal in my life, which is just to be a continual learner. Uh, another one was financially. I was selling cars at the time. I had worked at Starbucks. I had waited tables for a very long time. I never made more than, let's say, like 30,000 in a year, and that was even, that was probably closer to 20 or 25. So I was just, I was broke. So I saw programming as a way to get out of that and that was very motivating. So I had a passion to improve myself in that way and financially and that was a big motivator. Again, it wasn't about the code. Another thing that's really important to remember is that I saw it as a vehicle to improve my life situation but also of those around me. So I can improve my friend's life situation, my family's life situation because I could be more supportive or I can financially help them out potentially. I could also maybe help them out if they were trying to get into this career. I also thought that I could help a company by, I, I think I'm you know, a valuable person to have on a team, asset to have on a team because I'm a nice person and I'm, I bring good ideas to the table, at least I think so, right? <laughs> maybe I don't, who knows? You'd be the judge of that. But the whole idea is that I saw it as a vehicle to improve and, and have a bigger sphere of influence because as a server, as a, car salesman, my sphere of influence just felt so small. I couldn't really give back in the way I wanted to, where as becoming a programmer, it's like you could become good enough to help others, you can get good enough to have a blog, a, a YouTube channel, maybe you can go speak at conferences. Uh, all the things I'm doing now were, I saw in some way, shape, or form when I first started this, and that's what really motivated me. That was my passion, it wasn't about coding. I don't, I don't necessarily care that much about coding, even now, I, I have a passion for it because I've been doing it for so long, but there's nothing inherent to coding that I necessarily like. It's my other passions that I really have used as a, a, I should say, is really programming that has been a vehicle to really help my passions out. Now, there's, this myth comes from a very specific place, and it's, it comes from a place of thinking that if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life, right? That's like a quote that people will throw around all the time. Like, you know, if you love what you do, you never have to work. It's like, I hear that and I go, nah, not really. <laughs> not really, to be totally honest with you. Because if you're, if you're the type of person who you just live like a life of leisure, like you play a lot of video games, you hang out with your friends a lot, you have a job that's like, okay, kind of pays the bills, but you know that there's more that you want to do in life, 
for you to sit down and learn to code, even if you're passionate about it, it's gonna be very hard because you are not a good self-manager. Is it that you're not passionate about code? No, I, I would say that's not necessarily the case. It's more that you don't have the passion to improve yourself. You don't have the passion to uh, really see that there's some opportunity that the software development can bring to you. So that's the, the really the passion you should stoke. And that kind of thing is only stoked by really sitting there and thinking about like, where is your life going right now? Is it going in a direction that you want? If it's not, then maybe it's time you get your shit together. Like that's really what it's about. It isn't about a passion for coding. I, that's such crap. I just, I get so sick of it. I get triggered by it clearly. Like that's what you can see. I think when you find something that you love to do, I think you work harder. I think for me it's been, I, there's times I work myself way too much because I enjoy what programming and, and improving myself and improving my skills can bring to my life and to other people in my life. I just, I'm completely motivated by that. So. I don't think that's the case. Now, let's just say like, here's the last thing I would leave you with. Is passion something that you can cultivate to help yourself? 100%. Like I said, I've developed a passion now that I've been doing this for five years. I've, I really do, I feel passionate about this. When I sit down in front of my computer, when I open up an IDE, I can feel, I'm like, man, this is what I was meant to do. Like, I have that feeling, right? Like now I have that feeling. I wouldn't say that when I first started sitting down and coding because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But that comes from years and years of going through the, the slog, I would call it, of programming. I mean, most of like at my your day to day work as a programmer, to be totally honest with you, unless you're you're in some like high high stakes environment, maybe like a startup or something like that. Most of your work is going to be pretty boring, especially early on. Like you're going to be working on bug fixes. You're going to be maybe creating small little features, like new things. You're not going to be building a lot of applications. Typically, maybe you find a job where you're consulting or something like that. You're in meetings a lot of the time. You're you're talking shop, and it's just like a very mundane and boring process. And once you go through that for a few years, like it it starts to get boring. Like believe me, it really starts to get boring. I mean, I can think of times where weeks would go by and I would just work on bug fixes, and I was like, man, this is just you know, you spend all day like debugging through code and looking through log files, trying to figure out like, what something in the systems broke. And it takes you a week to figure it out and you fix it and you're like, you just don't feel much fulfillment from it. But you, what, what keeps you going through those times is again, everything that I mentioned before, I feel like when I work on a bug uh, and I fix it, even if it took a week and it was very boring, like it leads to my overall life goals, which is I wanna be a better developer. And I feel like whatever I was working on was helping me do that. So however you feel about passion, what I will tell you is that if you, show up, if you put your time, if you put your effort in, if you, especially if you're really struggling with this, those are the people who tend to find the most passion out of programming because it wasn't easy for them. They don't take the skills for granted and they usually have a long career and they're the type of programmer who will pick up almost any type of work that they can, meaning they're the type of person who wouldn't like be like, oh, you know, I, I can't possibly work on this because I only build applications, I only do this. They're the type of person who just like, they'll, they'll pick up whatever because they just, they are passionate about programming at that point. And that's the type of person I typically like to work with is somebody who's just like, they, they, they'll do whatever, they get their hands dirty, they're not above the fray. So I hope this is helpful guys. Like, look, I know I'm uh, ranting today, but this is just how I felt. I, I kept hearing this and I, I wanted to give you guys my take on it. Maybe you guys disagree, honestly. I don't necessarily care, like that's, that's how I see things. So if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like and a thumbs up, I guess. Other than that, if you are interested in, say you're starting out here and you are just beginning your journey or maybe you're a few months in and you're trying to become a programmer, the one question you guys always have is like, what programming language should I learn? So I'm trying to help people out who are on that stage of their journey. They're trying to figure out what they should learn. I've created a PDF called the top five programming languages to learn in 2019 for beginners specifically. So I covered just five programming languages I think are helpful to learn on your path moving forward. So if you want a copy of that report, I highly recommend going to andysterkwitz.com forward slash report. The link is in the description and download that report for free. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day and peace out as always, guys.